okay, we're going to talk about neuroanatomy terminology and answer the questions. What are some helpful neurodirectional terms and what's meant by CNS and tracts and nerves and ganglia and nuclei and such? Basically, what jargon confused me when I first took neuroanatomy? So hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So begin, let's talk about directional terms in neuroanatomy. Rostral means towards the nose, caudal towards the tail, ventral or anterior towards the belly, dorsal or posterior towards the back. And to better understand how these terms are used in neuroanatomy, let's take a look at a cute little mouse. There's the brain. If we talk about this mouse brain towards the parts of the brain towards the nose, we say, well, it's rostral. Or towards the back, we say caudal. And the same for spinal cord, rostral, caudal, towards the nose, towards the tail. And if we then take a look at the brain and spinal cord, we say, well, this is ventral because it's closer to the belly. And this is dorsal because it's on the back. Fantastic. The problem is we're not a mouse. We don't look like this. We look like this. But we use the same jargon. So when we talk about the brain, the part that's towards the front or closer to the nose, we'll say rostral, and towards the back, we'll say caudal. And then instead of saying the bottom of the brain, we say it's ventral, and the top is dorsal. Now let's take a look at the brain stem and spinal cord. The top we call rostral and the bottom we call caudal. And front is ventral and back is dorsal. We also use synonymously anterior and posterior. Let's practice. Here we have uh, those two vertical lines represent coronal sections, one towards the front, rostral, and one towards the back, caudal. And let's take a look at this now using a coronal uh, MRI. And we're starting rostrally. Now let's move caudally. All the way to the back, you can see the cerebellum. Now let's go back rostrally. Let's do another one. Here's a mid-sagittal section of the brain, and let's talk about the brain stem, which consists of their midbrain, pons, and medulla, and below that's the spinal cord. And we're to say, well, the midbrain is rostral to the pons, and how the pons is caudal to the midbrain. And we look at this section of the uh, spinal cord, and anatomists looked inside and see this gray matter, and we say, well, both of those are horns. What do we call them? The one towards the front, ventral, towards the back, dorsal or anterior horn and posterior horn. So there are some directional terms in neuroanatomy that may be helpful. Now here's some other the definitions of neuroanatomy terms, CNS, PNS, and ANS. So first of all, let's take a look at that and blow it up. That's the central nervous system. It consists of the brain and the spinal cord. This is the processing center. It takes sensory input and motor output, and that's what processes the brain and spinal cord. In the brain, we also have the higher order cognitive centers of the brain for thinking and emotions and such. We also have the peripheral nervous system, which consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves. This is what actually provides the sensory input and motor output information. Uh, we do that through nerves of the cervical plexus and the brachial plexus and the lumbosacral plexus. So any nerves that you think of like median nerve or sciatic nerve is part of this peripheral nervous system. But we have also the autonomic nervous system, or ANS. This is the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. This is a component of the peripheral nervous system that regulates involuntary processes. So our sympathetic nervous system, this is the fight or flight, increase of heart rate, increase of blood pressure, pupil dilation, and so forth. Sympathetic pathways arise between the T1 and L2 spinal cord segments in those lateral horn gray matter. And they use norepinephrine and epinephrine, those catecholamines, as the neurotransmitter that binds to adrenergic receptors to cause the fight or flight response, except for sweat glands, sympathetics use acetylcholine. It's always an exception, right? Now, the parasympathetic nervous system, that's the rest and digest. Resting like decrease heart rate, decrease um, respiratory rate, and digest, increase GI motility and secretions and so forth. These pathways, parasympathetic pathways, arise in the brainstem, midbrain, pons, medulla, or the S234 spinal cord segments. This is why it's also called the cranial 
sacral, cranial brainstem, sacral, sacral region of the spinal cord. And these pathways use acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter that binds to muscarinic cholinergic receptors. Uh, now, what's the difference between gray and white matter? Well, gray matter are neuronal cell bodies and dendrites, no myelin, where white matter are axons with myelin. So here's a neuron, and there's a myelin sheath, and myelin is white. It's this fatty lipids uh, protein, so we say that's the white matter. And when you look at the cell body and dendrites, we say that's gray matter. We look at this spinal cord cross-section, gray matter there is in gray. What's gray matter? Cell bodies. Now, they give rise to axons that leave. In this case, in the gray matter, it's a motor neuron. But gray matter is primarily cell bodies. Now, what about white matter? It's white because you have these long axonal tracts that are myelinated with this myelin sheath, and that's why it looks white. We look at this uh, coronal section of this um, cadaver donor, and look, there's gray matter. And let's superimpose one cell body. And that cell body is then going to give rise to the white matter, which are these long axonal tracts that are myelinated. So gray matter, cell body, and dendrites, white matter, myelinated axons. Now, what's the difference now between a tract and a nerve? Well, tracts are collections of axon or nerve fibers within the central nervous system, and they're typically given the origin, they give the origin and destination in the name. And a nerve is a collection of axon or nerve fibers in the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. Here's one example, the corticospinal tract. It's a, there you see in salmon color, well, that, that one axon, but there's many of them, and it arises in the cortex and descends down to the spinal cord, hence cortico starting spinal, spinal cord, origin destination. Here's another one, the spinal thalamic tract. There you see in green. It arises in the spinal cord and ascends all the way up to the thalamus. That's what we see about tract. Now, a nerve is a collection of axon or nerve fibers within the peripheral nervous system. Here's a nerve, and all those circles, they're axons. And if we pull out one axon, they have two different flavors, sensory for input and motor for output. And so that's why some nerves are motor only, where you've got a bunch of motor neurons and all those motor neurons together make a motor nerve like your suprascapular nerve. Only motor neurons that innervate the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. But some nerves are sensory only because they only have sensory neurons to make a sensory nerve, like the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, where all those nerves in that region of the skin that's shown there, they're only sensory neurons. And some nerves are mixed, meaning they have motor and sensory. Motor and sensory neurons that make a mixed nerve. For example, the radial nerve that then gives rise to motor neurons that innervate the triceps and sensory neurons that bring sensation from the back of the hand. What's the difference between a nucleus and a ganglion? Well, a nucleus is a collection of neuronal cell bodies in the central nervous system, and a ganglion is a collection of neuronal cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. Here is a nucleus in blue. It's called the oculomotor nucleus. And what's a nucleus? A bunch of cell bodies. In this case, it's somatic motor cell bodies that are going to give rise to axons that innervate eye muscles. Here's another example of a nucleus. There's the thalamus. And we take a look and blow up the thalamus, and that's what it looks like. And what are all those letters? Shing! They're nuclei. And nuclei are a collection of cell bodies. So look at the thalamus. It's just a whole bunch of different nuclei. That's why it's called the nickname, the nuclear hub or the relay station or grand central station because there's lots of nuclei. Here's a brain stem that shows, look at all of these, trochlear nucleus, dorsal cochlear nucleus, motor nucleus of the facial nerve, nucleus of the spinal tract, of the trigeminal nerve. A nucleus is a collection of neuronal cell bodies in the central nervous system. But what's a ganglion? A ganglion is a collection of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. There's a dorsal root ganglion, and there's one cell body of a sensory neuron. And let's see some other ones. There is the sympathetic chain ganglion. What is that? The green circle, the postganglionic sympathetic ganglion of neuron. And what about this? 
there is the pterygopaltine ganglion. What's a ganglion? A bunch of cell bodies, and these ones give rise to postganglionic parasympathetic neurons that innervate the lacrimal gland and glands in the nasal cavity. How about this one? There's the trigeminal ganglion. A ganglion is a bunch of cell bodies. These are cell bodies from skin of your forehead, upper lip, and lower jaw. But again, a ganglion is simply a collection of neuronal cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. And that, my friends, is neuroanatomy terminology in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.